This is Representative Anna Paulina Luna on the Grant Mitt podcast shared by Baptiste. Thank you, Baptiste. I got men in black. Let's check this out. Tell me about your own. You've heard about the UAPs, UFOs. <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay, tell us about that. So I got men in black. I know a lot of people are going to be like, that's crazy. But ultimately what happened is being a member of Oversight, we follow up with whistleblowers and we also can conduct our own investigation. So myself, Representative Burchett from Tennessee and Representative Gates uh, were on a small codel to the panhandle because a whistleblower came forward from Eglin Air Force Base pilots to Representative Gates's office saying that the Air Force was essentially covering up UAP activity and we needed to look into it. So we coordinated the meeting. Uh, Pentagon tried to initially cancel the first one. We got it back on the books. We show up there and we get in and the base commander tried to basically tell us that we didn't have authorized clearance to look into and speak to some of the witnesses of which you don't tell Congress that we don't have the authorized clearance, especially members of House Armed Services, Oversight and Judiciary. Okay, so I've covered this a few times, Eglin UFOs on the channel. Matt Gates gave a detailed account in the July 26, 2023 hearings with David Grush, Ryan Graves, and David Fravor about how they couldn't get access. The base commander basically stopped them even though Matt Gates received a protected disclosure from the pilot who actually captured photographs of these weird looking acorn objects. And then as Matt Gates said, we had a little discussion about how authorities work and the oversight committee should definitely be able to do their oversight duties. So we, I kind of had it out with the base commander, which is kind of funny because this guy really thought that he, he had it going on and he actually right. in the middle of our um, our meeting, he took off on leave, which never happens with a member, a delegation going to military uh, base. But then also too, we had pretty sure people from the agency that were there as well. And so you really don't find that. I've worked at Herbert Field. I, you know, I worked in the military for a number of years. And so why would a intelligence agency need to be there on a meeting for whistleblowers? Mm -hmm. So that happened, I can tell you, based on my investigations, not in a classified setting, that I absolutely believe that there is um, things that are advanced technologies, not of human origin. And then we conducted the interview with David Grush. As you saw, it was one of the most widely attended congressional hearings in U.S. history. The information that was brought forward was particularly alarming because you're hearing about people that have potentially been murdered and covering up this information and uh, it was very interesting so i advise everyone to watch it okay so there she's not 100 percent sure right she says she believes there are people from the agency so i'm guessing the central intelligence agency that's usually what you mean when you say the agency people in suits but my question is could it have been air force osi as well because they they also just wear suits and don't normally give out their ranks etc but she was in the air force before she was in the military before and so she should know about the Air Force OSI. So it may, makes me think that maybe there was someone from Central Intelligence Agency there to meet this delegation. That's at least what she says in this interview. She then goes on to mention David Grush's testimony. And she did have classified hearings apart from what we saw in the July 26 hearings. But she says just to watch the July 26 hearings, 2023, if you haven't seen that, I live streamed it on this channel and I was actually there in the, in the back of the room. I was the last person to get in actually. And there she says that David Grush claimed that people were harmed or murdered in the past to protect this information. So I advise everyone to watch it. Yeah. Was it, so based off of what, and have you received classified information or just what they said? No. Yeah. I've, we've, um, but I can't talk about yeah, of that. Of course yeah. you can't talk about it. So what did you, before you came to Congress, did you think aliens were real? So I wouldn't call them aliens. I really like what Grush calls them. He says that they're interdimensional beings and he's very specific so what about does that. that mean? I think it means that they're not necessarily a biological entity from another planet per se. Interesting. Um, what I will say is, you know, I share a Christian perspective on many things. And what's been interesting about this is the amount of stigma that existed previously to this cycle. But we have such a bipartisan push for transparency on this topic that they can't necessarily hide it. 
it has been interesting to see the levels of things that come up. Oh, there's no authorized clearance. You don't have the read-in authority for this, this, that, and the other. Well, if Congress is writing the bills to fund these programs, yet we don't have authorized access and oversight into it, then that's not necessarily something that happens in a free country, right? So we continue to push. But, I mean, it's been very interesting to see some of the stuff that's come up. She mentions there her views have kind of changed as she learned more information on the topic, whereas before it was aliens, she would have said aliens. But now she said she concurs with David Grush that it's interdimensional beings, maybe biologics that we can't really say are living beings. And this kind of came up with Gary Nolan's claim that they could be drones, like biologically printed drones from a non-human intelligence, from another civilization or from some other level of life, organization of life that we don't understand. I've proposed before that maybe there's macroscopic life, just like there's microscopic life that we didn't believe uh, un- until we saw it with microscopes and then that's we figured out that's what's causing disease, etc. Maybe there is macroscopic life that is interacting with us from another dimension. So that would be a different size dimension. It's just one idea. Maybe they can print these biologic beings or entities right as david grush said we don't know if they were ever actually alive or living maybe they can print the ships just one idea one example i give of what could be meant by interdimensional being she also says there it's amazing the amount of things that have come up the amount of roadblocks that they've thrown in the way you don't have access to this you can't get access to the skiffs to actually pass the classified information and as Tim Burchett says, once they even get in there and they actually are in a classified setting, they're really told not much more, right? There's still more roadblocks. They say it's only need to know. And it's very super compartmentalized information. Was it before you learned it? Did you, did you think it was going to be completely different than what you learned? Was it? No, I had, I had some, some suspicions leading up into it. You know, when I was stationed at Portland Air Guard Unit a number of years ago, I remember there was a incident that occurred and the pilots kind of came back and asked one of them what, what he thought it was and he couldn't really talk about it. He, and he didn't want to because the stigma that the military has is that you're crazy, right? But we're seeing that with especially technology that we have, even you know your iPhone, for example, you can record things and it's not necessarily going to be classified. So you know, I kind of knew about it. I knew that that was a thing within the military and that people were kind of worried about talking about it. But I think now, especially with transparency, uh, we hope that more people come forward. You know, the people that have come forward are credible. We've done the background checks on them. They're not, you know, tin hat yeah. wearing kooks. Right. But, you know, historically, there's a lot there that's to uncover. And I suggest that everyone look into it on their own. I can attest to the, the stigma issue, right? I was a F-16 pilot for 18 years and we never went to talk to the psychologists, et cetera. You know, a lot of guys I'm sure had mental issues. You, you see after people retire, they talk about PTSD. But when you're actually on flying status, it's so difficult to get on to flying status to become a pilot. We watched many friends actually not make it due to medical issues. And so to go and voluntarily turn yourself in and talk to a psychologist, right, to get mental health, was just a recipe to immediately get taken off flying status. Because a lot of these pilots also have what's called a a Q clearance, which is based on what base they're at in their mission they're doing, they actually have to do uh, nuclear weapons. It's called strike mission. And this one is easy to get taken off of strike mission, and it's easy to get your classified access, your access to top secret information pulled, at least for periods of time, right? And once you're pulled from your top secret, once your top secret clearance is pulled, then it's very difficult to fly. You can't fly because you need access to that information to actually fly the the missions. So at least in the past, pilots were very hesitant to go and talk to the flight doc, right? You don't want to highlight any medical issues that you have at all with your body that could be possibly taken off flight status. And one of those things would be saying that you see some sort of UFO, right? That you saw an alien craft out there that you can't determine it was an actual real object. Now you're going to come back and say, oh yeah, I saw a spaceship. And that that could be an immediate recipe to get taken off flight status, right? You could easily be taken off. Your commander just has to say, 
yeah, pull his clearances uh, at least until we see what's going on. And then once you're out of your clearances now, it interferes with all of your training. And now it can totally train wreck all of your currencies to actually stay and maintain your pilot status to actually be a pilot. So I'd say if people saw an actual spacecraft out, out there, saw UFOs, if they were alone, they're probably not going to bring it up. It'd have to be multiple people. I just released a video on Illinois UFO. And I think the only reason the police actually brought it up is because it was seen by so many police officers and they were all on the radio at the same time. So I think you need multiple pilots out there seeing this thing. You need to have it openly communicated across the radio and then to get radar tracks on it actually recorded and then to get FLIR, so forward-looking infrared, targeting pod footage of it so that you can come back and say, look, I'm not crazy. I did actually see something out there. Like with David Fravor, right? They had two pilots and two Wizzos who were right there and saw the Tic Tac at the Nimitz. So I think that's what you need. But the stigma is still a huge issue, at least Sounds like still in the United States, I did talk to Klaus Svahn and he said in Sweden, just in the past six months, the stigma has apparently completely broken down there. And now they're, they're much more open-minded on it. So hopefully we'll see that changing in the U.S. as well as more and more of this information comes out and more people like Congressman Luna are actually speaking out, saying that she got men in black, where she believes it was agency people at the meeting with the base general saying, no, you can't have access to this information. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. It really helps and it's free. Consider subscribing to get future notifications of when I release videos. And you might like this video recommended by YouTube just for you. If you want to support the channel, join these great people over here, get exclusive bonus content, then click this button here patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato or become a YouTube member. If you want to continue the discussion, go to UAP Society Discord. Links are all in the description. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.